Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. You know, a number of months ago, I did a video on installing decoders in Athern Blue Box locomotives. And that's been a pretty popular video. There have been a lot of people watching it. So what I want to do today is take it a step further and show you how to install decoders with sound in these Athern Ready to Roll locomotives. Because these have been very, very popular in the past. And I'm sure that there's tons of them out there just waiting to have decoders installed in them. And with this particular locomotive design, uh, Athern made a real effort to make it as easy as possible to install a decoder in their locomotives. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at how easy it is. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. You know, uh, even though I model the Southern Railway in the 1950s, I do have some favorites from the later time period uh, when they were in what's called the tuxedo scheme, the black and white. And among those favorite locomotives of mine are these SD40-2s. They just are very, very special locomotives to me for some reason. There's something about this long hood and this big front porch, and then actually being able to hear these hauling a string of cars. Uh, it really is an impressive sound and an impressive sight. So what I'm going to do today then, as I said, let's go ahead and pop this open and install a uh, sound decoder in it and a speaker, and then it'll be up to you to try it with your locomotives. So I'm going to go ahead and focus down here on the workbench and we'll get started. Uh, with this project. What I want to do first is, in order to remove the shell, you have to take the two couplers off, which is really very simple. Because all it requires is a Phillips head screwdriver, fairly small, and you just back those screws out. And at each end, and we're going to lift it, that screw out, set it down, and then the coupler will just slide right out, like that. Oop, there we go. So at that point, you can then just uh, easily pop the shell right off of the locomotive. Just lift up on it. Now, when you do this, be careful, because there's a bunch of wires inside, as you can see here, that um, go to all of the lights, the headlights and the tail lights. And Athern used something like um, one and a half volt uh, grain of wheat or grain of rice bulbs in here, and they're not glued in place. So it's very easy to pull them out of their little slots. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this down, get my uh, couplers out of the way before I knock them somewhere and lose them. And then let's go ahead and turn the shell this way so we can see what we have to deal with. Now, if you look real close, you'll see we have two options here. Like I said, uh, Athern made it as uh, easy as they could to, uh, to do this conversion. So you have this circuit board here, and we have an 8-pin NMRA uh, uh, socket here, and we also have this 9-pin JST socket. So you have a choice. You can either use a, a JST type decoder and just plug it in, or you can use one that has one of these 8-pin plugs on it and just plug that in. So they're both readily available still on the market. They haven't been replaced by the 21-pin and the 18-pin uh, types of decoders. Now, the first thing that you need to do anyway is remove this blanking plug. Now, that's the plug that allows it to run on DC alone. So we want to remove that. It doesn't say that in the instructions anywhere, but my feeling is if you plug a decoder in here without removing that, it's got to short it out because there's, there's got to be a shorting connection in here in order for it to run off of DC. So I go ahead, I just remove these 
and it's, and it's really that easy, very easy to do that. Okay, and then that, you can just put it out of the way because I'm gonna use this particular decoder right here. It's a Digitrax SDXN136, and um, it comes with this uh, 8-pin plug. Uh, you can plug in a, uh, a power extender, which is the Digitrax version of a Stay Alive, and uh, I added, uh, if they come with the these very, very tiny uh, in-scale sized speakers and this small uh, capacitor for a holdup. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I've replaced that with a different connector here that has the power extender connected to it and I've added in its place of that small speaker, I just went ahead and soldered on my uh, one of my sugar cube speakers. So we're gonna I'm gonna use that. And I've shown you guys enough times how to solder a sugar cube speaker on, so I'm not gonna go through that step. But it's fairly straightforward and easy to do. Now this particular uh, decoder comes with about eight different uh, sound packages preloaded on it. It has several diesel uh, sound packages, different types of diesels, and two steam. So, uh, and, and those vary anywhere from an RS1 up to an SD70. And uh, fortunately, one of the uh, one of the sound packages is a Jeep 38-2, which should you know sound fairly close to an SD40-2. Uh, so it's got the the dash two uh, options uh, built in. So I'm just going to use that for now. And at some point uh, down the road, I'm going to go ahead and I'll show you how to uh, load um, new sound packages into these de decoders using the Digitrex sound loader uh, program that's avail available for free on their website. Um, I will point out, I'm pretty sure it's only available as a Windows product though. Um, they also have a large number of uh, locomotive sound projects available uh, for download on their Sound Depot uh, page. So what I'm gonna do now, we've got that taken care of. We're gonna put this in, but before we go further with that, we need to make room for our speaker. Fortunately, Athern um, went ahead and designed in a removable section from the chassis, and it's just got two screws that hold it in place. And once you pull this out, it gives you that extra room uh, to put a speaker in the uh, long hood end. And this is very easy to remove. So let me pull this out first, get the two screws out. And we'll set that aside. Now, in order to remove this, it's got the two wires that come up from the trucks going to the board. So we're gonna to have to pull those two uh, wires loose in order to get this off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wiggle these a little bit until they pop off like that. And then I'm gonna pull the wire out and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. There we go, put that one there. And then that just lifts right off of there. One option, of course, would be to put the speaker inside of the cab, and then you could leave that weight in place. But I prefer to have it back here where the prime movers are located. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to replace these wires on the board. So that's just slide it in here. Whoops. Let me tighten that up a little bit more so it'll fit through the hole. And pull it up and over. And we'll go ahead and slide this back into place. Or even skinny fingers. Now, let's do the other one. There it is, suddenly popped right on. Make sure everybody's in, in place. Okay, so we've got our pickup wires there and we've got everything attached. Now at this point, um, trying to decide which way this goes. Well, I'm gonna make the assumption that this is correct here. And if it doesn't work right, we will put it back or take the shell back off and turn the uh, pin around. 
Okay, so at this point, we have the decoder plugged in, and I know it works because I tested it to find out that uh, that was the uh, proper orientation. So now we have to get the, uh, the speaker installed here, and that's a simple matter. Okay, so that's all set up, ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and insert the speaker into the hood. Now, when you're doing this, it's a good idea to uh, check your, your lights because invariably they're going to get knocked around. They're just, the, uh, the wires are just held in place with one piece of, of tape and it's not all that, uh, not all that tight uh, in there. So let me go ahead, drop my sugar cube speaker in and we'll get that set. Okay, so that's, that's pretty well stabilized down here inside of the, uh, inside of the hood. And uh, because all of these, uh, one of the reasons that I like putting the speaker back here is because you have all of these fans that are open. So you can get a lot of sound directly out of the top of the locomotive through these fans. Okay, so that's in there now. We have that set up. Um, the decoder is going to sit right here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is put this uh, power extender inside the hood, right in this area in front of the speaker. So it'll be right in here. And that's going to keep it out of the way, and uh, I think that's going to provide plenty of room for everything to drop into place. So let's give that a, a shot. Let me uh, maneuver it down in here. Okay, so there, that's in place. Uh, another thing I did, I took a piece of Kapton tape and secured the decoder to the top of that circuit board. So that's not going to get in the way. So let's see if we can get this all to fit in here. Hopefully it's going to fit right in there and everything is going to be okay. There. All right, just went together perfectly, no problems at all. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I wanna flip it on its back here and let's reinstall our uh, couplers. So we just put that in there like that and drop a uh, screw in place. Let me see if I can, oh, there's the Phillips right there. Okay, there's the first one. And let's get that other one. Okay, it's always a good thing to check and make sure that they move freely in case you over tighten the screw. Okay, both of those are working fine. So we've got the decoder installed. Now, as I said earlier, the decoder comes preloaded with some sounds, uh, but I went ahead and uh, I wanted to get something closer. So since this is a 16-bit decoder, they did not have a 16-bit SD40-2 file. They only had an 8-bit version. So what I did was I uploaded a uh, SD45 sound package into the decoder. And um, I think, you know, it's closer. The, the SD40-2 uh, had uh, a 16-cylinder um, 645 prime mover, whereas the uh, um, SD45 had a 20-cylinder engine or prime mover. So they should be 
pretty close, maybe a little bit louder, but we can adjust the volume down. Uh, I'm gonna, I haven't done any uh, uh, adjustments to the volumes yet. And what I'm planning to do is uh, either um, Friday or Monday, I can't, I'm not sure which yet, I will go ahead and uh, do a video showing you guys how to uh, upload uh, new sound files to these uh, Digitrax uh, decoders. And we'll go through that procedure. Uh, and, and I'll also go over some of the programming steps because you can program the master volume, the individual sounds, the prime mover, the bell, the uh, whistle or horn, excuse me, and uh, a couple of others. And we'll go ahead and go through the steps for programming of the decoder for this locomotive. And in the meantime, if I find a 16-bit SD40-2 file for this locomotive, we'll go through the process for uploading that in place of the SD45. But for right now, what I want to do is let's move it over to the, uh, to the layout and give it a test drive. Okay, here we are on the layout. I've got the locomotive all set up and sitting there waiting uh, to be put through its paces. And I've got it uh, muted right now. What I'm going to do is I need to switch microphones so that uh, my uh, shotgun mic is turned on and I'm going to disable my lavalier mic. So I'm not going to be talking. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the locomotive on. You'll hear the prime mover. And then we will uh, ring the bell and then listen to the, uh, the horn and um, any other of the sounds that, uh, that pop up and give it a good test drive. Okay, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope that uh, you find that it's as easy to install a decoder in one of these Atherin ready-to-roll locomotives, you know, because these are just one step away from uh, plug-and-play. 
uh, I mean, all you have to do is, is install a speaker. And that just takes a couple of, uh, of solder uh, contacts. And uh, other than that, the main issue is just getting all of the wires and all of the components, the, 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 keep al the stay alive device, the speaker and uh, the decoder and all the associated wires crammed into that narrow shell or hood uh, in a way that is not going to interfere with getting everything to go back together again so that you can get that uh, shell back onto the chassis. And uh, once, you, once you figure that out, then everything kind of falls into place because, you know, once I managed to get that power extender back up in there out of the way, everything just fit perfectly. So don't be afraid to use a little bit of double-sided foam tape and some of the uh, Kapton tape that I used to hold that uh, decoder in place. Now, I have not, you know, shown you anything about how to do programming with this decoder and how to upload the files. So what I'm going to do is, I don't know if it'll be the next video I do, it might be, uh, or it might be the one after that. I'm not sure. It depends on the timing of some other things. But at any rate, I'll be doing a video showing you how to use the Digitrex uh, free sound loader program to upload files to their decoders. And uh, we'll go through the step of doing that. I, I'm going to try to find an SD40 dash two file. I'm pretty sure I know where uh, I can get one. And uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at how to upload a file, uh, a sound file, into a Digitrex decoder. Because I'd, I'd really like to have, uh, you know, a true SD40-2 uh, sound file uh, loaded in here. And also at that point, I'll show you how to adjust the various volumes for the horn, the bell, the prime mover, the master volume, anything else that's in there. I know there's a, a, a CV for adjusting the bell ring rate and things of that nature. Plus, there's some other things we haven't had a chance to look at that uh, we, can, we can take a look at in that video. So that's why I've kind of held back on doing too many things with this uh, particular uh, decoder and uh, locomotive uh, sound file. And I've gotten word from uh, the supplier that I ordered my uh, uh, vaccine uh, from that they have shipped it to me. Uh, so pretty soon we'll be looking at installing a vaccine on the modules uh, on that curved back tarp that I showed you how to do. So in the meantime, have a great uh, week, and we'll see you here on Friday with another video from the DCC guy. Bye now.